Hey, 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 my Facebook Live family. So, hey, guys. I am super excited. Super excited. Yesterday was Philadelphia. And you guys know that I love, love what I do. So, it was an amazing experience, as always. It wasn't exactly everything that I was supposed to do. But we'll talk about that a little bit more. Hey, D. So, Thank you guys for joining. My name is Altavis Pelzer. I am the voice coach, not a voice coach, but the voice coach, helping you to find your unique voice in order to reach a target audience. I equip women who have gone through abuse to define, accept, and use their unique voice. Yes. Hey, Letitia. Hey, sis. And so yesterday was Philly. I'm hype because Thursday is Baltimore. And then, of course, this is the Ayala's this weekend. But, you know, Speak Easy, which this is episode 10, guys. Can you imagine? It's already episode 10 of Speak Easy. Um, you guys know that I come to you live and talk to you guys about what it means, what the behind the scenes are. Hey, sis. Um, oh, thank you. What the behind the scenes stuff is. Thank you for sharing. Hey, auntie. And so, you know, I I can't talk to you guys and not be transparent. Um, I missed I missed a couple of points. I missed some things last night. Hey, Fatima, I missed some things. I was nervous. <laughs> and you might say, why were you nervous? I, I'm going to tell you exactly why I was nervous. So for those of you who are joining me, thank you for joining. Share out the broadcast because somebody may need this inspiration. They may need this, this bit of help and support when it comes to them speaking. Hey, Fatima. They may need this bit of help and support when it comes to them speaking. Because a lot of times, public speakers do not tell you the behind the scenes. They don't show you the fact that they're scared or nervous. Hey, Tanya. They don't show you that they don't always get it right. They don't show you that they miss a mark, miss the beat. So you can catch the replay. And it's bit.ly forward slash quit tour tickets to get the replay from yesterday. I literally, um, I messed up. I did. <laughs> On so many different levels. And I can tell you exactly why I messed up. That's why we're doing Speak Easy, right? So I can tell you, you know, my missteps. So that way you don't have the same missteps. Well, yeah, I misstepped. I did. And I'm going to tell you why. So for one, I'm going to tell you one, it was a dark area. Like the place where we were was, was not well lit. And so I have a ring light. And I had my ring light in my bag, and I never pulled it out to use it. So I looked like this shadow in the replay. <laughs> I looked like a shadow talking in the replay because it's so dark in the restaurant that we were in. That part. That was a rookie move, I know. But I was ner like I said, I was nervous. I had a simply because of the emotion of it. I told you when it's emotional, when you have something emotionally invested in something, it, it kind of affects how you speak, what you say. So it definitely affected what I said yesterday and how I said it. But it also clouded my mind because I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't show anybody my book and I had books on me. I didn't offer the book to anybody. I didn't use my ring light. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> what in the world is going on? So it was a great experience, though. And for those that missed it, like I said, bit.ly forward slash quit tour tickets so you can get the replay. Um, I loved it. I still hit my points. I still gave them something powerful. I still gave them something to walk away with. I still gave my freemium, but there were some things that I did miss. And so I know that people often think that as you, you know, as you go along, that you're, you're supposed to get better at it and um, that, you know, you're supposed to, like, be top-notch and be perfect and pressed and pristine. And, guys, let me tell you, hey, Tierra. Oh, thank you, Fatima. It was um, it was so like nerve wracking in my mind. 
Like, I, I'm so glad that I didn't have to stand up because the emotion of it all probably would have came out a little more if I had to stand up. And you could hear... Now, for those who know me, you probably could have heard, like, my voice starting to crack a little bit because it was starting to get, like... It was starting to creep up on me, but I did really good. Right, Letitia, it's always a learning process. And that's one of the things that I always teach my clients. It's it's a learning process. Don't think you got to get it right on the first try. Don't think you got to hit the, you got, you know, you're not always going to hit the nail on the head. It it happens. Guess what? Ask any carpenter and they'll show you um, times where they have bust up their fingers and, and nails and thumbs because they've hit their nail in front of Instead of the nail, they've hit their nail. So guess what? It, 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 no career <laughs> is going to be, you know, pristine and be presented in a way that is completely perfect. But I was glad that I was able to get the point across. I was glad that I was able to get it out there. So even if I look like this, this, this piece of dark chocolate on the screen talking and, you know, trying to get my point across... It still made it. People still understood what I was trying to say. Right? Listen. <laughs> Tiara knows. I, I told y'all I'm shy. But I did I did interact. Yeah, right? And I did interact. I did network. But guys. Listen, I literally had books in my pocketbook and completely forgot. I didn't show it on the screen or nothing. Completely forgot. Oh, thank you, Tiara. And it was, oh my goodness, it was so amazing. Being in that place after eight years, with, man, if y'all did not hear the message, you definitely want to go get Get that live stream ticket so you can get the replay. bit.ly forward slash quit tour ticket. Um, I know tomorrow night is New York and Thursday is Baltimore. I'll be speaking again in Baltimore. It'll be a completely different message. And I promise this time I'll show my books and I'll show what I have to offer this time. Like I won't. <laughs> I won't be a DTD and forget. I'm going to actually show what I have to. <laughs> but guess what behind the scenes baby this is real this is real and anybody who goes and tells you and tries to make you think that they always got it together anybody that ever tries to make you feel like um like you you missing the mark and and you'll never have it perfect and you'll never be able to do this this is not your feel no that's not what it's about. It's about the love. It's about the heart. Hey, Shane. It's about the heart. And if I if my heart is in it, then guess what? I'm going to keep moving. Thank you for sharing, Shane. If my heart is in it, I'm going to keep rolling out. <laughs> love you, too. I am. I'm going to keep rolling with this. So it may not have been perfect yesterday. And y'all might be looking at the video like, uh, <laughs> you've been live streaming for some time. What happened? Listen, <laughs> it went down yesterday, but I, again, exactly, Tara, exactly. And a lot of times, a lot of times the pressure that we receive is the pressure that we put on ourselves. It's not even the pressure of the people that's watching or that might be not even be the, preach, the people that are in the room. It's the pressure we put on ourselves. And so for me, yesterday was emotional so it was like, oh my goodness, I just wanted I just wanted to make sure that you guys could feel the emotion that it meant for me. Like what it meant for me, I wanted you to understand that you could have that same feeling. And I had somebody say to me this morning, that's what it is. I want to be where you are. And I said, yes, I was able to get my message across. Exactly, Auntie, exactly. It, right and of course we're our own we're our own worst critic of course y'all know i feel like i smile too big like <laughs> i smile too big but of course shane already said that my smile and my laugh are the door to my soul and he said something else but like you know i smile i laugh i giggle y'all know i sit there and i'll be cracking up at coach 
And you know that I'm very transparent. You know that I'm very like, you know, I, again, I'm shy. So it, this is the thing. It was so funny because in the beginning I was talking and my nerves were getting the best of me because I, you couldn't even hear me in the beginning. And so literally my bro, Dave Anderson, was like, hey, sis, speak up. Can't hear you. <laughs> and I just rolled my eyes at him. <laughs> I just rolled my eyes at him like, you know I'm shy. Don't tell me speak up, you know I'm shy. <laughs> but guess what? It's real. That's the real of it, guys. Literally, I was like so nervous. So nervous. So nervous. Like the video, it wasn't even that long. I think I did like 11 minutes. <laughs> F that, y'all. I don't know. I'll go back and check to see how long it is. Because I'm telling you, I was just that nervous. I don't know how long I spoke. I just know that I had to get it out. And once I got it out, it was done. Listen. <laughs> I know that's right, Tanya. Everybody was talking about I had the gold one on yesterday. Everybody was loving the flowers. I said, my sis, Tanya got them for me. But it's, um, it's definitely a process. It's not easy. It's, it's not easy. And so don't ever think if you're on the other end of it and you're looking at somebody and the timing isn't right, the schedule doesn't go as perfect as you thought it would be, um, things get messed up or, you know, it's out of the, the schedule's out of line. I mean, all types of stuff happens, guys. I promise you. All types of stuff happens behind the scenes. So, yeah, you may get a, a speaker who gets up on stage who's kind of nervous. You may get a speaker who gets up on stage who killed it, and they're still nervous, and you never know. But, like I said, I wanted to encourage you guys that you, guess what? I missed the mark. I missed so much of the mark, y'all. Like, I missed it. <laughs> but that's okay, because guess what? I still had people who loved what I talked about. I still had people who were in, engaged. I still had people who I still had. Now, it, this was the other thing. Every experience is going to give you something different. And so, y'all know I love being able to give eye contact. Well, I wasn't really in the, I wasn't really in the atmosphere to be able to do eye contact. And so, that, I think that kind of threw me off a little bit too. But it's not to say that it's not doable. It's just to say that I need to find a better approach for being in that environment. Because I never know when I may be in that environment again. Hey, D. Marie, I never know when I may be in that environment again. And so it may be where I'm at a table and I'm talking. I know when I did my first breakout session in Fort Lauderdale um, back in November, my first time ever doing a breakout session, I was talking at a table, but I wasn't sitting down. I was standing up. So I was still the focal point, and I was still able to make eye contact with everybody. And it was a little different because that was a round table. This one was a rectangle table. So it made it, a, it, was, it again, it was a little different. Hey, sis, um, it was definitely different. But again, it's a learning experience. Yeah, I missed the mark. <laughs> I missed the mark. That's all right. So for those who are just now joining, my name is Altavis Pelzer. I am the voice coach, not a voice coach, but the voice coach. And you're catching episode 10 of Speak Easy, where I come and tell you the behind the scenes of what goes on when I'm preparing for an event, doing an event, uh, and after the event. And I'm coming to you guys today saying, guess what? Yep. I did it. I missed the mark. There were some things that I didn't do that I should have done. Um, for one, the video for yesterday, I can't tell you how long it was because the experience was really emotional for me. But I didn't, you know, I didn't cry. I didn't, I did really good. But the experience was really emotional for me. And I didn't use the ring light. So it's like, I'm just like, like the shadow. <laughs> talking in the video so I think I'll have to re-record that it's <laughs> just in case <laughs> I may have to re-record that but guys I literally had the look I have a ring light I had it with me yesterday and did not pull it out I didn't go in my bag to pull out my books 
I didn't do any of that. So, yeah, you know, even when you've been doing it for a while, even when, you know, you, you have some practice under your belt, different circumstances will call for different things. Hey, Shalanda, different circumstances will call for different things, and it will definitely put you in a position of, this is a learning experience. Hey, Fred. Um, it was. It was definitely a learning experience. I wouldn't have changed it for the world. I loved the opportunity to get to meet some of the amazing ladies that I see online all the time. I got to talk to some people. And then I had I had, I had my auntie there with me. I had um, Tiara there with me. Thea was there. Um, so I got to see a lot of your faces and give you hugs. And that is that that's important <laughs> it's important not to just have relationships online but to have actual relationships in person and see people that they're real um because it matters oh <laughs> not at all tiara not at all because i know listen i know that first experience with being at any any event for coach that first experience it's kind of like, woo, it's overwhelming because <laughs> you get so much. She gives so much. Oh, my goodness. She gives so much, y'all. She gave so much wisdom yesterday. She poured into us like always. She went around the table and, you know, gave some great insight and information. And it was no holes bar. She does not hold back. But, you know. When people take relationships offline for their clients, it means a lot. So you as a speaker, you may go live every day. If you never do a live event, it will mean absolutely nothing because all you're doing is going live. You may go live and do classes. And if you never do a live event with the people who are following you, it will mean absolutely nothing. If they never get to touch you, and feel on your arm, so to speak, guess what? You're just a figment of their imagination. And it, it's sad because, you know, we get caught up in the hype of social media sometimes. Right? Exactly. Exactly. It was a tornado of knowledge. Um, sometimes we get caught up in the hype of social media. Uh, and as a speaker, hey, Deidre... As a speaker, um, social media is a tool. It is a tool. It is not the only tool. So doing live events like the one I just did yesterday, doing live events like the one I'm doing this Thursday, that is where people get to know you. That's where we were literally sitting there before we were seated. And I got to talk to the ladies and I got to laugh and giggle. And ladies that have been following me, I got to give them a hug. You know, so even if I don't get it all correct or all, you know, perfect from the stage, guess what? I still made memories. I still made things happen. I still gave the opportunity for people to see and touch and feel me and know that I am a real person. Yes, it's not always easy. Because, <laughs> again, like I said, we never want to show that vulnerability to people. And that's what it is. It's that fear that people that you're showing people you're vulnerable and they'll take advantage of it. It's that fear that um, that you, you're, you're, people are going to see you, your flaws. And they're going to laugh at you. It's your fear that people are going to see your flaws and then they're going to ridicule you for it. It's almost like we get into that headspace of I'm back at, you know, grade school. Thanks for sharing, Deidre. It's like I'm back in grade school and I don't want the kids to laugh at me. So I don't wear my glasses at school, but then I struggle to be able to read the board. I don't wear my glasses at school, so then I, I struggle because I want to sit in the back of the class with my friends, but I don't want to wear my glasses, so now I'm failing my classes because I won't wear my glasses. It's along that same line. When we're scared to show people that we have flaws, we end up missing out. 
So some of you as a speaker, you've ended up missing out simply because you're scared to show people your flaws. You're scared to show people that you got nervous when you got on stage or you that you forgot to show people that you had your book on you. <laughs> hey, Aunt Andrea, you forgot to show people that you had your book with you because um, you don't really do that whole selling from your bag type thing. <laughs> Yes, thank you guys for sharing and inviting. Guys, this is episode 10 of Speak Easy, episode 10. And, you know, Speak Easy is when I come to you guys and I talk to you about some really powerful things when it comes to behind the scenes for public speakers, behind the scenes. Listen, ah! Behind the scenes, um, when it comes to public speaking, when it comes to being the author, there are things that you miss. You do. I miss the beat. I do. There's times where I'm, I stumble. I fall. Like I said, I went live. And when I first went live, because of the emotion of yesterday, I literally was like, I guess, whispering. Because <laughs> we were in an area where it was kind of loud. So I was kind of whispering, I guess. And one of my bros was like, uh, I can't hear you. <laughs> said, speak up. What's going on? I just kind of roll my eyes at him like, shush, hush. <laughs> hush, you know I'm shy. Hush it. Hush up your mouth. But that's something that I try to, you know, always keep in front of my the speakers that I'm working with, the women that I'm encouraging and empowering. It's not always, we don't always get it right. Guess what? I don't have to get it right every time. I don't. Somebody walked away with what they needed, then I, I did what I was supposed to do. If somebody walked away with what they needed, then I did what I was supposed to do. It may not have looked pretty. It may not have always had the prettiest bow. How, I'll compare it to this. How many of you know that when you wrap a present, there are some people that can wrap a present and make that thing look like it is meant for the queen. There are some people that wrap a present and it looks like a two-year-old wrapped it. <laughs> but guess what? The wrapping doesn't matter all the time. For some people, they're more worried about what's in the gift, what's underneath the wrapping. The wrapping doesn't matter. Now, now, unless you're my mom who used to, like, literally take her time and unwrap every present. She was very, she was very, uh, she, well, that's because we picked out wrapping exactly how, you know, something that we knew pertained to each, something they loved. So sometimes she would hold on to the wrapping, which we would, we would always fuss at her and just, like, try to get her to rip it. But most people aren't like that. <laughs> Most people are worried about the wrapping because if what's inside is worth it, it doesn't matter what the wrapping looks like. It doesn't matter how you wrapped it. Um, I can tell you guys this. Y'all know I'm transparent. Um, one of my first jobs was gift wrapping in, in the mall in Philadelphia, in Shellingham Mall. And I literally would have people bring up all types of stuff. Now, this is a funny for you guys. For me, it was funny because I learned this early on. And it's probably something that I, you know, I'll probably get some, like, wisdom out of it beyond belief, right? But not everybody knows how to rap. Not everybody knows how to rap a gift. Okay, Deidre, they don't. And so people will, will really pay you to rap a gift. And so I would be there, and it wasn't like a payment system. They would just give a donation. And I had this guy come up to me, and he said, okay. <laughs> First of all, when they got to give an explanation before they give you what they need wrapped, you know it's about to be a funny situation. But he said, okay, I need you to wrap two things for me. <laughs> I said, okay. Now, mind you, I'm a teenager. I think I was like 13, 14. I said, okay. He said, all right. He said, if you wrap these two things, he said, it's 40 bucks in for you. So I'm like, okay, you're going to pay me 40 bucks to wrap two items. Wait a minute. <laughs> 
See, auntie, you gonna give me 40 bucks to rep two things? So I'm like, okay, great. All right. Yeah, he pulled out. The one item was this easy item. I, I, I wrapped it, no problem. He had a box for it. I put it in the box, wrapped it. Beautiful, put a nice bow on it. The second item was this vase. I have never to this day seen a vase shaped this oddly. <laughs> this odd shaped. And so he looked at me and he said, I said, remember, it's $40 in it for you. <laughs> See, some of y'all, it, it, and it, it came out, it came out looking okay. It didn't look horrible. It came out looking good. And, and it had a bow on it and everything. He was so surprised that I was able to wrap it. But I'm quite sure that the person that unwrapped it didn't care about the wrapping. They cared about the vase because the vase was beautiful. In comparison, the vase was amazing. The wrapping was meant absolutely nothing. But sometimes it's the presentation. And I understand that we want to get it perfect. But understand that the presentation, it may not always be the best. That's why I look real like a ghost or something on that video. <laughs> but the message, what was underneath the wrapping, that's what was important. That's what nailed it. That's what made people say, thank you. I've been following you for such and such amount of time, and I appreciate what you do. I appreciate what you say. I appreciate the fact that you go live every day. I appreciate the fact that you're giving all these tidbits from behind the scenes of public speaking. I appreciate that. So again, I had the ring light, y'all. I had it. It was in the bag. I had it. I still didn't use it, but that's okay. I'll get it better next time. I'll use the ring light when I speak on Thursday. <laughs> I'll use it then. But don't think that just because you didn't get it perfect, that it didn't have a meaning. Don't think just because you didn't get it perfect, that somebody won't be affected and infected by the talk you gave. That part is most important. That part. And so, I want to make sure you guys know that I come to you guys live every afternoon for Speak Easy for a reason. Because I want you to realize, even if you stumble and fall, don't quit, don't give up. You still got some things to do. Um, I also want to let you guys know that I'm going to be moving Speak Easy over to my business page. And that's, of course, this is episode 10 of Speak Easy, where I go live for usually around 2, 2.30 to talk to you guys about the behind the scenes of being that public speaker, that motivational speaker, that author, the, the, the thrills, the chills, the, the times where we stumble and fall and look like a ghost in our own video. So <laughs> those parts. But understand, you're the only thing that holds you back. If I only get one person that appreciates what I do, I can change that one person's life. I'm going to keep doing it. Don't be so focused on the numbers. Don't be so focused on the outcome or the, the wrapping. Be focused about what's on the inside. Be focused about the present or the gift that you are giving people every time that you speak. Because that's what it is. Every time you get on stage, you're giving a gift. Every time you go live, you're giving a gift. That's why I can't understand how people will go and the only time they go live is when they're promoting a, a, a new class. The only time they go live is when they're promoting a new event. The only time they go live and give you content is when they want you to buy their stuff, buy their stuff, buy their stuff. That's not building relationships. It's not. 
Because, see, the ones that, you know, buy your stuff, buy your stuff, buy your stuff. They don't always buy into you. And so, again, the numbers aren't always what matters. Yeah, we want, everybody wants a, to teach classes with 100 people in the class. And everybody wants to stand on a stage where there's 1,000 people in the audience. But what does it mean to be on a stage with 1,000 people in the audience and nobody, nobody receives what you have to offer? Meaning, the message that you're giving, nobody receives it. How much of an impact can you make? 1,000 people, 2,000, 5,000 people. It'll mean absolutely nothing. Right? I, Andrea, it will mean absolutely nothing. I've seen people get on stage and bore the whole crowd to sleep. And it could be a, a stage where there's 100 people in the room. It means nothing if you're not giving something worthwhile. You know, I told you guys, content is king and video is queen. And as a speaker, you need both. Yeah, Fatima, I have. I have been in, I've been in programs. I've been at events where people have spoken. I mean, and you just like, can this person stop already? <laughs> Can we just go on to the next? Exactly. Can we just go on to the next person? Like you want to just, you want a Sandman. You want to have a Sandman moment and just kind of go up on stage and kind of pull them to the side and say, that's enough. Just, just sit down. Just sit down. <laughs> just sit down. That's enough. That's enough. We don't need no more. Thanks. Thank you though. Thank you. It's the truth. I never want to be that person. If I'm ever that person, somebody inbox me and say, hey, hey, you were pretty boring today. <laughs> Please. Don't let me be that person, y'all. Don't let me do it. If I'm ever. Right? Exactly. Got you thinking of your to-do list, the shopping list. Got you thinking of what you're going to make for dinner. Mm -mm. If I ever do an event and that is the reaction of the crowd y'all just pull me to the side tell me go sit down <laughs> but Fatima I know that you have so so let's talk about that because Fatima just said that that was that's that's one of her fears and as and that's you know that's one of the reasons why I went live about this today was you know a lot of a lot of people fear going on stage and not connecting with the audience um, we, ah, when we have content, content that we know our audience wants, we have content that we know is relevant to our target audience, we will always connect with somebody from the stage. When we have content that is not meant for the target audience that we're in front of, you won't connect. You know, I always joke around and say, you know, uh, taking on the opportunity to be a speaker at a horse, a horse breeders convention. And that's not what you're talking about. Guess what? It's not going to work. <laughs> you're not going to connect with that audience unless you have something that is relevant to them. So as long as you have something that's relevant, you'll always connect with somebody from the stage. Right? Look, Fatima, listen, you talking about sewing clothes at a horse a horse breeders convention. They're not going to be interested. Hey, Michael. Or you have people who will literally go and do an event and they're, uh, they, they signed on to do the event because of the numbers. And then they didn't do any research about who's going to be there. Exactly. Yes, indeed. They didn't they didn't do any research. Thanks for sharing, Michael. They didn't do any research with who was going to be in the audience. They didn't do any research with who the target for that particular audience was. 
And so they go unprepared. There's ways for you to prepare, even if it's not 100% your target audience. There's ways for you to prepare. If you don't know that, then you need to get in a class <laughs> and learn that part. There's ways for you to prepare for any event, to speak in front of any audience. But is it? you got to learn your target, what they want. you got to learn your topic and be a, the expert walk in your expertise that's it you gotta stand in your expertise and so my expertise is working with women <clears throat> working with women who have overcome and become the victor over abuse that's my expertise um, helping them to find their voice because they've become that people pleaser they've become that that pushover they've become that yes person that's my expertise. Why? Because that's who I was. So I know what it means to go through that process of you never say no to people. You're always saying yes. So people will use you and use you and use you. And then when you need people, they're not there. I've been that person who literally you, you go and, you know, you're the person everybody calls when, when they need something. I've been that person. And I've even recently had to really, like, step up and say, okay, I got to put up my boundaries and say, you know, I got to say no to this. I got to say no to that. All of that will come across. It will. All of that will happen. It does. You are not the only one. So that fear of not connecting with your audience it's just a fear of not being, not realizing you are the expert. It's the fear of not really knowing your topic. And oftentimes we, we know our topic. Like we can spit, if we're talking to somebody one-on-one -on -one and we can talk them through a process, we can give them the numbers, we can give them the statistics, we can give them the research, we can give them all the information, then guess what? You can be on stage and do the same thing. You can be on a stage and do the exact same thing. If you can talk to somebody one-on-one -on -one about the information that you know, you can do the same thing from a stage. So I've had that fear. I, I still sometimes get a little nervous when I'm not quite sure who's going to be in the audience. I still get a little nervous. <laughs> but you can have that fear. But you can overcome that fear. You can. It just takes practice. It does. It takes practice. And so, yeah, y'all know that, like I said. Right? And you know what? And you, you work your way up to it. You do what you can. Do what you're comfortable with. But you'll find that literally at some point. Oh, thank you. You'll find at some point. You're like, oh, I got this. I can handle it. And even if you still get a little nervous, I'm telling you, once you get up there and start talking, it goes away. Once I started talking, it actually got, you know, comfortable with the fact that I was looking at the, not the front side of my screen, but the back side of my screen, like, because somebody was holding my phone for me and that I wasn't really, I didn't, couldn't feel like I was really engaging with people because normally I'm like talking to people and engaging with them. I couldn't do that. And... <laughs> I wasn't really making eye contact because of the way the table was shaped. And, you know, it was like a lot of stuff going on. So I couldn't really, I couldn't really do it. But, again, you learn. You live and you learn. I don't always get it right. That's okay. I learn from my experiences the same way you can learn from yours. So I thank you guys for joining me for another episode of Speak Easy. I love you guys. I will be back later on today. And then again tonight, because I want to talk to you guys about some courses that I have coming up. If you guys are ready to join the three-week intensive for paid speakers, bit.ly forward slash uh, love, no, live loud now. I almost said it wrong. bit.ly forward slash live loud now for you to get into the three-week intensive for paid speakers. You definitely want to be a part of 
of that class. If you're saying that it's, you know, you kind of a little nervous about getting out there on stage, you'll have some, some tips and some tools to get you started. So I look forward to seeing you guys later on today. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow again at 2 for Speak Easy. You guys have a good one, and don't forget to press it out.